Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and in today's tutorial we are going to be working on a pattern that has been very highly requested by you guys and that is our Herbie the Hedgehog pattern. This is hands down one of my favorite patterns and I cannot wait to share it with you so let's jump into getting our supplies and then we can get started. So for today's project, I'm going to be using Honey Bunny in this beige color. I can't exactly remember what it's called. Um, and then this is Baby Snuggle in Teddy Bear. This is the classic brown that I always use. Usually I use Soft Sand in Baby Snuggle, but they are out. So this is what I'm going to use today. I'm going to be using my 5.5mm crochet hook. I'm going to use some fabric pins, scissors, a darning needle a stitch marker, some fiber fill. I also just have this uh, Hobby Rainbow yarn. Um, it's 100% cotton yarn just for the face details. It kind of matches my brown which is kind of what I was looking for um, for the eyebrows um, as well as our marker for the spikes. We're also going to need a safety nose. Uh, if you don't want to use a safety nose you could always embroider a, a, a nose on. Um, but I'm going to be using that today and we're going to need some safety eyes as well and I'm going to be using just these 12 millimeter plain black safety eyes. Now once we have gathered all of our supplies we can get right into the pattern. Alright so to begin we're going to grab our color A yarn so for me it's that beige color and this is what we're going to use for our head body combo which is what we're going to start with here. So to begin for round one, we're going to start off with a magic ring. And then inside that magic ring, we're going to place eight single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll just pull that tight. And there is our first round completed. Now moving on to round two, we're going to grab your stitch marker. Now for me personally, I like to use a scrap strand of yarn here. I'm just going to cut that. And I'm just going to place that right in front of my very last stitch that I just made in round one. And that's going to mark my rounds but you use whatever works best for you. Now moving on to round two, we're gonna do our increase round. So we're gonna do an increase stitch in each stitch around. So an increase stitch is two single crochets in one. So one and then right back in for two. And we'll do that all the way around. And you should have a total of 16 stitches at the end of round two. <laughs> All right, and that is round two. Now for round three, we're going to do the combination single crochet in one stitch and an increase in the next. So single crochet in this first stitch and then in the next stitch we're going to do an increase stitch. So two single crochets in one and we're going to repeat that a total of eight times. Increase, single crochet and increase and you should have a total stitch count of 24 at the end of round three. So I will finish this off camera and I'll meet you back here for round four. All right, so for round four, we're going to do just a regular single crochet round. So it's single crochet 24, four, five, six. So one single crochet in each stitch around.
and there is round four. Now moving on to round five, we're going to do the combination single crochet two and then an increase stitch in that third. So single crochet, single crochet, and an increase of two stitches in one. And we'll repeat that again for a total of 18 times, or eight times, sorry. Increase, single crochet one, single crochet two, increase. And you should have 32 stitches at the end of this round. Alright, now that is round five completed. Now moving on for rounds six through 15, so 10 rounds total, we're gonna be doing a combination, or sorry, we're gonna be doing single crochet 32. So one single crochet in each stitch around from rounds six until rounds 15. So I'm gonna complete these rounds off camera and I will meet you back here for round 16. All right, so this is what we're looking like up until round 15. So all of our uh, 10 single crochet 32 rows are all done, and we're gonna move on to round 16. So for round 16, we're gonna do the combination single crochet two, one, two, and a decrease stitch. Now I like to do invisible decrease. Sorry, it's very windy if you can hear that outside, I apologize. Um, what we're going to do invisible decrease here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the front loop of this first stitch right after the one we're working on and the front loop of the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through those two loops. So you have two left on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. That's an invisible decrease. So you just turned two stitches into one. Now we'll do that again. Single crochet two, one, two, and a decrease. So front loop, front loop, and we're going to do this a total of eight times, and your stitch count should be 24 at the end of round 16. There we go. Now for round 17, we're going to do single crochet 24. So one single crochet in each stitch around. Three, four. So I'll just finish this off camera and I'll meet you back here for the next step. All right, so that is up to round 17 completed. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff our project up into this point and we're gonna place our eyes. Now, this is kind of a personal preference. I personally like to stuff first and then place my eyes because I find the stuffing really changes the shape of amigurumi and sometimes I'll place the eyes before I stuff it and I don't end up liking it and then I have to figure out how to take it apart. So I personally like to stuff first, then place my eyes, and then if I need to take the stuffing out to actually attach my eyes, I can do that. So I'm going to just take my fiber fill here. I'm just going to start stuffing. Now you don't want to overstuff. Um, you just don't want it to spread your stitches too much. So what I like to do is I just like to sweep my fiber fill out to the edges of my project. Um, and that way I know that everything's going to be more evenly filled. Then I just restuff the middle there. And then I sweep it out again. Some more. And we will add a little bit more before we f do the final close. So don't uh, worry if it's not exactly perfect right away. But that is kind of 
what we're looking like. Next, I'm going to take my eyes here. Again, I'm using the 12 millimeter crochet or the safety eyes, sorry. Um, and I am going to be placing the eyes between rounds 9 and 10. So I'm just going to count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 9 and 10 are right here. So I'm just going to roughly place an eye. Now I've kind of looked around and this is the side that I've decided I'm going to have be my face. Um, so just pick the spot that you want to be your face. So I've roughly placed one eye there. And then we want about four to five stitches in between our eyes. So one, two, three, four. So about five-ish. Maybe around there. And you can play around with this. If it's not looking right or not how you want it, you can, you know, do six if that's what you prefer. We are going to be doing a little bit of face shaping. So that means we're going to be bringing these in a little bit. So just keep that in mind when you're placing your eyes that this isn't the final resting spot for them. So one, two, three, four, five. I have about five stitches in between mine. And I'm pretty happy with where those are. So I'm going to just place my backings on. Now I just kind of work around my stuffing here. And I'm just going to re-fluff my stuffing here a little bit. Add a tiny bit in the center. And there are my eyes placed. So now moving on, we're going to finish off our head body here. Just going to grab my stitch marker. Now moving on to round 18, we're going to do the combination single crochet decrease. So single crochet decrease. single crochet decrease. Now we're going to again repeat this a total of eight times and you should have 16 stitches at the end of round 18. Single crochet decrease single crochet decrease all the way around. All right, so once that round's done, I'm just gonna add some more stuffing here. Sorry about that, to my uh, end. And I can stuff a little bit more after this final round, but you should kind of be where you want it to be at this point. So for round 19, we're gonna do a full decrease round. So that's a decrease stitch in every stitch around. So we have 16 stitches, so you're gonna repeat this again eight times, and you should have eight stitches at the end of round 19. There we go. Now I'm just going to remove my stitch marker and I'm just going to place a slip stitch here into the next stitch. I'm just going to grab my scissors, cut that. And I'm just going to um, yarn over here and pull that through. It's going to create a little knot. 
Now I have a little bit of stuffing I just want to add right at the end here. Again, I apologize for the wind. It is beyond windy out there today. I don't know what's blowing in, but I'm sure it's nothing I'm going to be happy about. All right. You don't want to overstuff, but you definitely want to make sure you have enough in there so it keeps its shape. And this stuffing I'm using is quite um, soft, so I usually find I need a lot more of it. Next, I'm just going to grab a smaller hook. This is a 3.75 millimeter. It doesn't have to be this size. Any size will do. I just find using a smaller size for this is nicer. So basically, I'm just going to go under the front loop of each stitch around, grab my yarn tail, and pull it through. But you only want to go into the, the like the top or the front loop, the one that you see first. Um, and that just kind of makes a seamless close. So you don't have any like gapping or spacing. And then you just pull that tight. And then I just like to make a little knot here to close off that little last piece. There we go. And then I'm just going to cut my yarn again here. And I'm just going to weave that in. There we go. And there is our our Herbie Hedgehog head all done. All right, so our next step, we're going to shape our face a little bit. So I'm just gonna take this brown yarn that I'm gonna use for my eye detail, but it really does not matter what color you use because this yarn is not gonna be visible. But I'm just gonna put it on my darning needle. So basically what we're looking to do is just bringing in the eyes ever so slightly just to give some definition to the face. And to do that, what I like to do is I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna insert it at the top of my one eye. Then I'm going to push it over into the exact same spot on the other eye. And I'm not going to pull it all the way through. Next, I'm going to insert my needle. And you want to be as close to the eye as possible here. I'm going to insert it just below the eye. And then I'm going to push this to the back because we're not going to see the back. It's going to be covered in the spikes. And I'm going to take that off my hook there, for my needle. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other eye. I just have to add this tail to my... And I'm just going to push this back. Now because we're not going to see the back here, I'm going to just offset this a little bit. I'm not going to put them through the same hole. And that's so that... Um, Sometimes if you put it through the same hole, even if you knot it, um, once it goes inside, it's going to loosen the face a little bit. Um, so I personally like to um, have it um, separated so that it keeps its shape. So now all we're going to do is we're going to pull. And you can see here, if I pull really tight, it's going to bring the eyes all the way in. If I loosen it, it's going to bring them back out again. We don't want it to be, oh my god, pulled. We're just looking to add a little bit of definition to our face here. Now I have a little bit like that is kind of what I'm looking like. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to tie a little knot on the back and sometimes one eye might pull more than the other so I just like to take my needle and bring it out a tad and then I can pull it again this is just like playing with it until you get it looking the way you want it you can see here how it created this like definition on the front I know it's really hard to see on camera, but it basically just pulled the face in so that it looks a little bit more realistic, as realistic as a stuffed animal can be. 
And then I'm just going to tie a bunch of knots here just to make sure they're really secure. Let's see if this one's pulled too far. I don't know why that one is not securing. All right, so once we are happy with that, I'm just going to tie another knot here. I'm just going to cut my yarn tails here. And then again with my smaller hook, I'm just going to weave these in. Now again, this isn't going to be seen. So this like dimple that you now have on the back, that's totally fine. Um, it's going to be not seen, so don't worry about that. And there is our face all shaped. Now I know we're looking like a bit of a potato right now. You kind of have to trust the process with this one. The beginning it looks strange but it's gonna come together I promise so we'll just put our head to the side and we're gonna move on we're gonna start making the nose now again we're gonna use our color a yarn and we're gonna start off again with a magic ring and then once we have our magic ring we're going to make four single crochets one two three, four, and we're going to pull that and we'll place our stitch marker again. Now moving on to round two, we're going to do the combination single crochet and an increase. So single crochet, I know four stitches is hard to work into, but just take your time. So increase here and then we're going to do that one more time single crochet and increase just like that now for the last round round three of our nose we're going to do the combination single crochet two one two and increase so two stitches in one and we'll do that one more time one two increase and that is our nose super easy to make so now I just took my stitch marker out I'm just going to slip stitch into the very first stitch again. Leave about a 12 inch strand of yarn for sewing on. And I'm just gonna yarn over, pull that through. And there's our nose. Now I am just gonna stuff with my yarn tail but I have way too much so I'm just gonna cut that. and stuff my nose here. Now we're going to take our nose um, safety pin here. Now this is the one I'm using. It's just like a classic nose. Now I personally find um, that there's like an upward trajectory on one portion of your nose which maybe doesn't make any sense but um, this one you can play around with a little bit. I'm just putting it into round one of the nose that we just made, just like that. And you can just spin it around to see where you think it looks the best. It's going to be the best spot for me. And then I'm just going to place my 
back on it. And then we can stuff again with that yarn end. And there's our nose. So now we can just grab our face here and I'm just going to zoom you out ever so slightly. Now our uh, nose is going to go on rows 9 through 12 and I'm going to be uh, attaching it quickly with some fabric pins. So I'm just going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's going to be right where we put our eyes. It's going to go right in the center between the eyes. So you can just roughly place it. And it should go down to round 12. So here's round 9, 10, 11. So it should go end here and start here. And you want it centered between the eyes. So right now I have a little two stitches on either side of my uh, nose for the eyes. So once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to get my darning needle here. And I'm just going to start sewing this on. Now if you need to add any stuffing, now would be the time to do so. You can just add in ever so slightly if you need to, uh, if the yarn tail wasn't enough. And then once we are back at the beginning, I'm just going to place a little knot here. And then I'm just going to push that all the way to the back. Loosen up those stitches a little bit. And there is our hedgehog nose attached. All right, so once our nose is attached and our head is done, we are going to start working on our eyebrows. So I'm just gonna be using that brown yarn again um, for my eyebrows. And I'm just gonna attach it to my darning needle here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to insert our darning needle. I just like to insert it kind of on the side of the body here. And we're going to insert it around either like the bottom of round 9 or the top of round 9. Um, it's kind of your personal preference where you want them to sit. I'm going to start with the top of round 9 and I can change it if I decide I don't like it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up two uh, rows here and I'm going to go over like one and a half um, stitches from where I first inserted it and then I'm going to push it over now this is something you might have to just play with so there's one we'll see the other one gets done and then if I like it I'll leave it and I just want to make sure that they're as even as possible. And sometimes that means having to go into this middle of stitches in order to get it even. So kind of like that. I don't love it yet. I'm just going to take this out. And then I'm going to move this over a tad. See if that makes a difference.
that's a little bit better so that's good so once I'm happy with that then I'm just gonna push this over to the same point where I started And then I'm just gonna loosen my eyebrows a little bit. And then I'm just going to take my yarn and tie a little knot on the side here. You don't wanna tie it too tight or it will pull your eyebrows. Especially with this type of yarn, you'll lose them if you're using a medium weight yarn like this. Um, so best to just do a light knot, cut your yarn. And then I'm going to just grab, oopsie, sorry, I lost my other hook, so I'm just going to use this one to weave that in. Now if you do notice that when you pulled it in, it pulled your eyebrows, you can just go under them, give them a bit of a raise there. And there's our eyebrows. Now the next step we're going to do is we're going to start working on the spikes that are going to be um, along the whole top back area of our hedgehog. But before I do that, I need to frame where I want my spikes to sit. Now this is kind of a guide. This strand of yarn is not staying in our um, project. Um, this is really just a guide for us so that we know exactly where our spikes are going to sit so that they're even. So to begin, I'm going to go to round three. One, two, three. And in the bottom of round three, centered between the eyes, I'm going to insert my hook here. I'm just going to pull that through. So that's going to be our starting spot. So you just want to make sure you're centered there. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to move over and our next guideline here is going to be the eyebrow. Now we want to be about two to three stitches away from the eyebrow. So it could be right here and this is not like a, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is really just a guide for us um, and everybody's going to look a little bit different. And that is totally okay. So I'm probably going to put it right here. So there's my first guide. Next we're going to go straight down. Um, see I may even go into like the center of this stitch. Sorry, one sec. This is kind of the process, just like trying it out, starting over. I'm a perfectionist, so it takes me a lot longer to do these things. Okay, let's try that again. So I'm just going to insert back into that top section here. I'm losing stuffing here as I do this. And I'm going to go over about here, I think, this time. And then we're going to go straight down. Now we want about a couple stitches, two to three stitches from the eyebrow, from the eye. And we want about five stitches from this, the side of the nose. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's pretty good good right there so I'm just gonna go here now on the bottom we want to be at the bottom of round 16 so I'm just gonna count down 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so 16 is right here so I'm just going to do that and then I'm I just placed a, a fabric pin here and I'm just gonna go in there 
And then you basically want to try and replicate that on the other side. Um, so probably like here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So this is about where we want to be. So that, that lines up pretty well. So I'm just going to put this here. And again, this is not staying, so it does not have to look pretty. So now I'm going to follow this line all the way up to here. And I'm actually going to take that out to be straighter. And then back into the top piece and out to where we started. All right, so there is our face framing. So we're starting right in the center of the head and we're gonna go around here, around the bottom to round 16, all the way up again for the top. And once again, this face framing section is gonna be removed. This is just so for our first round of spikes, we have a guide. So once we have our guide all completed, we are ready to start our spikes. All right, so once we are all framed up, we're gonna start the spikes. So I'm just gonna be using my brown yarn for the spikes. You can use whatever color you want. I've seen some beautiful hedgehogs made with so many different colors. Um, and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna be using a smaller hook. Um, you can use a 3.75 millimeter or four millimeter, and this is just gonna be for the very, um, like because we're working directly into the head, I personally find that it's easier with a smaller hook, um, but that's personal preference. The only thing is you just wanna make sure that you're doing kind of like a really loose stitch with this because you want it to match what you would get with a five millimeter hook. Um, but easier to get into the stitches, I find. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start off with a slip knot. Now, like I said, we're going to be working directly into the head. So I'm just going to grab a stitch around where we put our very first marker at the bottom of round three. What we're going to do is just yarn over, pull through, and we're just going to make a slip stitch to attach this to the head here. I've lost my... I always find this first one always the hardest. There we go. So once we are at this point, we're going to start making the spikes. And I'll just maybe bring you in a little bit. So for the spikes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna skip this first chain that's closest to the hook here. And in the second, third, and fourth chain from the hook, we're gonna place a slip stitch. So skip the first, enter the second. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, pull through, insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through, insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through. And there's one spike. Now what we're going to do is using, again, this is a guide, we're going to skip the next stitch and into the next stitch, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and attach in. So we're going to place a slip stitch there and then we're going to place four chains, two, three, four, skip the first, insert, slip stitch, slip stitch, and slip stitch. Skip a stitch and 
again, this does not have to be perfect. The stitches are not going to line up perfectly. But there is our first two spikes completed. So basically what we're going to do is for this first round, you're going to follow this guide as close as you can all the way around making your spikes. Two, three, four, skip a stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch. And then we're going to skip one, skip this one, and move into this one. And another one. Now this isn't hard, but it does take time. It's kind of tedious, um, but it's definitely worth it. So stick to it. And I'm just gonna keep working at mine and just do the first round and then I'll meet you back here for the next round. All right, so I've just completed my first round and I'm on my very last spike. I've met up perfectly with my first stitch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly behind this stitch here to end it and start our new spike. Now, um, once that first round is done, you can remove your marker because you don't need it anymore. It was just for that first round when we needed the guidance because sometimes you can get lost and think you're straight but you're not. So there is our first round. Now for all of our subsequent rounds the goal is you should be offsetting your spikes. So let's say you have your two spikes here you want to spike right behind here. And so um, that's not always going to be the easiest thing. You're still going to follow the pattern of a spike and then you're going to skip a stitch and then a spike. So I have mine inserted right here. So I'm going to skip and I'm going to stay as close as possible. So there I've created a spike and now it's directly be behind because you just don't want them all to be in, in right behind each other um, because then you're going to have kind of spacing like this where it looks like you have like huge gapping there. So to make it look as full as possible, offsetting it is ideal. The other thing is you want to stay as close as you possibly can to the previous row. It's going to take a lot more to finish it, but it will be worth it because if you don't stay super close, you will be able to see the spacing in between a lot easier. So I'm just going to go around. I'm going to just start doing rounds. You're just going to go in circles all the way around as close to the edge of your previous round and continue around all the way until the spikes are completed. So I will meet you back here once that is done. And there are all our spikes done. 
Now I know it's super tedious, takes a really long time, but I personally think it's worth it. Um, the closer you get, like when you pull it apart, you really can't see the spacing, which is kind of what I go for. Um, so like here, if you pull apart enough, you can see it, but, but uh, that's what we're looking like so far. So now we're gonna move on to the ears, the arms and the legs. Just gonna put that to the side. And I'm going to take my um, color A yarn, what we used for the body, and we're going to start off with our ears. I'm just going to bring them in. Now for our ears, um, we are going to do a magic ring. And inside our magic ring, we're going to place four single crochets. One, two, three, four, pull that tight. And I'm just gonna place my stitch marker. And that is round one of the ear. Now moving on to round two, we're gonna do an increase round. So two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of eight stitches at the end. Mm -hmm two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that is our ear complete. So I'm just going to take my stitch marker out. I'm going to place a slip stitch here. And I'm just going to cut my yarn about 12 to 16 inches as, as usual for sewing together and sewing on. Now once we have this part of the ear done, we're just gonna shape it um, to make it look more like an ear. So I'm just gonna take my yarn end with a darning needle here. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna find the good side. So this is the good side for me. So I'm gonna fold it in half with the good side on the outside. And I'm just gonna sew this bottom piece together here. Just that first two stitches. like that and then I'm just going to tie a little knot with this other yarn tail that we have just for extra security and there is our ear so just make one more of these and then we'll meet back here to sew them on all right so there are my two ears completed. And now we'll just grab our Herbie head again. I'm just gonna zoom you out a little bit so you can see. So <clears throat> we are gonna be attaching our ears to rounds four and five. So um, our first uh, point a spike here is on the bottom of round three. So this is round four and this is round five. So we're going to attach them just about here, right above the eyes, right against the spikes. Just like that. Now I'm just going to take a couple fabric pins here. I'm just going to pin those in place. And just make sure that it's even. Just like that. And then once I'm happy with 
that I'm going to sew them on. Just like that and then I'm just going to tie a knot here since I have both these yarn ends here if it worked out for you that way just tie a little knot and I always like to make sure see here I sewed in one of my spikes so get that out of there and then I'm just gonna push this through the back and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other yarn end here and then you just have to pull it a little bit to make sure it's not stuck in down there and then I'm just gonna very carefully cut this and there is one of our ears attached so I'm just gonna attach the other ear the exact same way and then we'll meet back here for the next step all right and there are our ears all attached so again, we'll just put our Herbie to the side. And our next step here is to make the feet and the hands. So for the legs or the feet, we're gonna start off with our color A yarn. And again, I'm just gonna bring in a little bit. So we're just gonna make a slip knot. And from our slip knot for the legs, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Next, we're gonna skip this, this chain that's closest to our hook, and into the second chain, we're gonna place one single crochet. And then into the next, a single crochet, into the next, a single crochet, and into the next. So we started off with five chains, we skipped the first chain, and we made four single crochets in the remaining um, four chains. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip onto the bottom side. So we just worked on this side of the chain and now we're gonna work on this side. And I'm gonna crochet right over my yarn tail. So we're gonna insert our hook and we're gonna place four single crochets along the bottom edge now and we're creating an oval. So there's three and one more, four. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into this very first stitch and I'm gonna cut my yarn here, just like that. There's our foot, and I'm just gonna tie these tails together. And there is one of our feet. So just go back and make one more of these guys, and then we'll meet back here for the next step. All right, so before we move on to sewing everything else on, we're gonna quickly make the arm. Um, it's a very similar uh, structure as the foot, it's just a little bit smaller. So we're going to start off with a slip stitch, or a slip knot, sorry. And we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Same thing, we're going to skip this first chain. In the second, third, and fourth chains from the hook, we're going to place one single crochet. 
for a total of three. So there's two and there's three. Again, we're going to flip onto the bottom now. And again, I'm going to crochet over my yarn tail and we're going to do three more single crochets for a total of six. And then I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch again. Cut my yarn and pull that through. Now once again, we're just going to tie a little knot with our two yarn ends here, just for extra security. And there's our little arm. And I'll just show you the size comparison. So there's the leg and there's the arm. So just make two of these each, so two arms and two legs, and then we'll meet back here to sew them on. All right, so we have two legs and two arms, so we're gonna sew these on. So I'm gonna start off with the legs. So I'm just gonna grab my Herbie here, and I'm gonna zoom you back out. Now these are super easy to attach. Basically, I'm just gonna put the ends that have the yarn tails on the bottom, and they're just gonna sit right along the spike line with about two to three stitches in between each other. You can have them like angled out a little bit or you can have them straight up, whatever you prefer. And then again, I'm just gonna place a little pin just to make sure that I have it where I want it. And then I'm just going to sew these on. So I'm just going to place my yarn tail on my darning needle here. And working right against the uh, edge of my spikes, I'm just going to sew this on. making sure I'm not sewing any of my spikes in again. Now, um, these will flop back down, so I personally like to just tack it up. So how to do that is you just insert um, your needle, and I'm just gonna push it up about two rounds. And then I'm gonna grab a couple stitches here in the foot, right where it lines up on the body of where I put it in. And then I'm going to insert it back into the body right beside where I initially did and bring it back down. And I'm just going to bring it back down to meet with this other yarn tail. Now I don't like to sew the very end so this will still curl a little bit but at least the foot will stay in position. And then once I'm happy with that I'll just tie a little knot here since I have two yarn tails here. And then I'm just going to sew, or sorry, push my needle through. And do the same to the other tail here. and there is one foot attached. So I'm just gonna quickly attach this foot and then we'll attach the arms together. All right, so there is our feet attached. And the very last thing to do is just to attach our arms. So again, very similar thing. Um, what we're going to do with our arms is we are just going to um, attach them flat like this so that they can kind of like twirl up like that so they look like arms and we're going to put them kind of around round 11 and 12 so if this is round 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
so 11 and 12. So just right below our eyes there. And I'm just going to again place a pin. There we go, and they'll just kind of twirl up like that. And then uh, once I'm happy with that, last last times here, we're gonna sew on, and then we'll be done. So I'm just going to sew this on exact same way as I did the legs, right against the line of the spikes as close as I can get to them. And just removing our pins here, making sure you're not leaving those in, especially if this is for a child. Now you can, um, you can tack these down as well, but I don't find that they flop around as much because they're not as big. So I'm just going to leave mine as they are. Let's tie a knot again with my yarn tails here. And then we're just going to push it back again. Same old thing. So there's one of our arms attached, and I'm just going to attach this one off camera, and then I'll meet you back here. All right, and there is our completed Herbie the Hedgehog. I hope you guys really enjoyed this pattern. This is definitely one of my favorites, um, and I hope you love it just as much as I do. Let us know in the comments down below how it goes. Um, make sure you post some photos. Tag us on Instagram if you do end up making him just so we can see all your amazing works of art. Otherwise, we hope you guys have a lovely day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.